You'll recall that we import a library using the import keyword. So just import pill and we run this. Documentation is a big help in learning a library. There exist standards that make this process easier. For example, most of the libraries let you check their version using the version attribute. So we go pill dot and then a double underscore. So this is called dunder version dunder. And we see the version of uh, the one that I'm using is 4.2.1. You might be using a different version because we might have upgraded it. Let's figure out how to open an image with pillow. Python provides some built-in functions to help us understand the functions and objects which are available in libraries. For instance, the help function, when called on any object, returns the object's built-in documentation. Let's try it with our new library module, pill. So help pill, and this renders nicely in line a, uh, a bit of help file that actually comes from the documentation of the source code itself. This shows us that there's a host of classes available to us in the module, as well as version information, and even the file called dunder init dot uh, sorry, dunder init dunder.py, which has the source code for the module itself. We could look up the source code for this in the Jupyter console if we wanted to. These documentation standards make it easy to poke around and explore a library. Python also has a function called dir, which will list the contents of an object. This is especially useful with modules where you might want to see which classes you might interact with. Let's list the details of the pill module. So dir pill, and we can see here uh, a list comes back with a bunch of strings. Most of these are intended to be internal uh, functions, so they've got dunder before and dunder after, and that's just double underscore. That's a fancy way in Python uh, that they say. Um, and we see that there's a couple that uh, do not have uh, dunder and are expected to be used more generally. At the top of this list, there's something called image, and this sounds like it could be interesting for us. So let's import it directly and run the help command on it. So from pill, we'll import image, then help image. Running help on the image tells us that this object is the image class wrapper. We see from the top level documentation about the image object that there's hardly ever any reason to call the image constructor directly. And they suggest that we use the open function, and that's what we should be using to get images. Let's call help on the open function to see what it's all about. Remember that since we want to pass in the function reference and not run the function itself, we don't put parentheses behind the function name. So help image.open. We're passing an object, but that object is actually a, a reference to the function. So it looks like image.open is a function that loads an image from a file and returns an instance of the image class. Let's give it a try. In the read-only directory, there's an image I've provided, which is from our Masters of Information program recruitment flyer. Let's try and load that now. So file, uh, we'll make it a string, a read-only directory, and then uh, msi underscore recruitment.gif. And we'll call image.open and pass it this uh, path to the file. And that should return to us an image object, which we're going to put into the image variable. And let's just print out this image. OK, so we see it printed a pill.gif image plugin.gif image file. And it gives us some other information there. So we see that this returns to us a kind of pill.gif image plugin.gif image file. At first, this might seem a bit confusing because we were told by the docs that we should be expecting a pill.image.image object back. But this is actually just object inheritance working. In fact, the object returned is both an image and a GIF image file. We can use the Python inspect module to see this, as the getMRO function will return a list of all of the classes that are being inherited by a given object. Let's give it a try. So we'll import inspect. Now, this is not a third-party library. It comes with Python. And then we'll write a function. Uh, we'll just print the type of the image. And uh, so type will tell us all of the types of the image. Uh, or sorry, type will tell us the type of the image, but we want to convert that to a string. But then we're going to call inspect.getMRO and pass it the type of the image and see uh, what that inheritance chain looks like. 
So we see the result is a, a tuple that's returned to us, which is actually all of the different objects that are being inherited from here. With GIF image plugin, uh, at the very, uh, usually bottom we would call this of the inheritance, the most specific version, uh, up to an image file, up to an image, and then up finally to an object. Now that we're comfortable with the object, how do we view the image? It turns out that the image object has a show function. You could find this by looking at the properties of the object if you wanted to using the dir function. So we'll call image.show and hmm, that didn't seem to have the intended effect. The problem is the image is stored remotely on Coursera's server, but show tries to show it locally to you. So if the Coursera server software was running on someone's workstation in Mountain View, California, where Coursera has its offices, then you just popped up a picture of our recruitment materials. Thanks for that. Instead, though, we want to render the image in the Jupyter Notebook. It turns out Jupyter has a function which can help with this. So from ipython.display, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but ipython was one of the early uh, terms for Jupyter. It started as just a, an interactive Python interpreter uh, before moving into a much larger project. We want to import the display function, and then let's call display and pass it the image. Okay, so there we see our inline display of happy Masters of Science and Information students. For those who would like to understand this in more detail, the Jupyter environment is running a special wrapper across the Python interpreter called IPython. IPython allows the kernel backend to communicate with the browser front end, among other things. The IPython package has a display function, which can take objects and use custom formatters in order to render them to the screen. There's a lot of different formatters provided, uh, including ones which know how to handle image types and different image types. And that's what we're using here. That's a quick overview of how to read and display images using Pillow. In the next lecture, we're going to jump in a bit more uh, into detail to understand how to use Pillow to manipulate images.